Exactly. Well, let's move on to this discussion on restorative justice. I think it's one that um, a lot of people don't know what it means. What you know, They've heard the term. I think a lot of conservatives uh, tend to bristle at the idea because it si- sounds maybe soft on crime. But uh, what's your understanding of restorative justice and where do you find some value in it as a conservative? So as often is the case, there's there's what the left means when they use the term restorative justice, yeah. and there's what I glean from it as having value. And those are two totally different things. <clears throat> Just to give you some context. So if you look at like biblical examples, like we go back to the Old Testament and the way that what we would regard as criminal activity was dealt with in those days, there were really two tiers. One was you're dead. Like there was a lot of capital punishment for things back in those days. Um, But absent that, there wasn't a jail system. There wasn't a prison system. What they did was they did a lot of restitution. They did a lot of you're going to pay this person back sevenfold, right? Like you're going to make not only make them whole for the material loss, but you're going to compensate them for having gone through what you put them through. And I think that there's a principle there that is quite frankly, divine and correct, right? Mm. And that we would do well as a society to reevaluate our criminal justice system to see where there are opportunities to mimic that and to incorporate that into the process for the purpose of making victims whole, primarily, right? but then also reincorporating, because the kind of the unspoken premise there, or maybe it is spoken in certain passages, is that if we're not going to take this guy out into the wilderness and stone him, if we're going to keep him in the camp, then it's in our interest and his for him to become a good guy, right? Right. For him to find his place, for him to be reincorporated back into the social order. And so that's the aspect of restorative justice that I find value in. Like to the extent that my Democrat colleagues are talking about the fact that 90% or whatever the statistic is of people who are currently incarcerated are at some point going to re-enter the community. What do we want that re-entry to look like? How do we want their lives to pick up from where they left off when they re-enter the community? We don't want recidivism. We don't want to have more victims in the future. These are all totally positive, good motivations. Here's the problem. The way in which the left and Democrats in particular are implementing this idea is at the exclusion of and and in replacement of holding offenders accountable. So we, we use all these words, right? Public safety, accountability, holding people accountable. Those terms mean something completely different to the Democrats than they do to me and you and right. probably anybody on the street. When, when, when you listen to a restorative justice activist talk about accountability, they are not talking about serving time. They are talking about sitting around in a circle talking about what you did and sitting there and nodding with your head down and, and kicking the ground and being like, yeah, you're right, I was wrong. That's their version of accountability. Now, I'm perfectly, I love that process. That's great. We should do that. Like, I want people to confront what they've done and to have that reformation and to re-enter society ready to work, ready to be a contributing member of society. But that's not a replacement for paying the price. Exactly. For what you did, right? Like you, you don't, you have to have that accountability in the true sense of the word of paying a punitive price for the crime that you committed. And they, I'll tell you what, if you want to make a Democrat bristle in their seat and wiggle and worm, you bring up the word punitive in a public safety committee meeting and you're going to get that effect.